Hello there, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be talking about updates. In the last week, DJI have released some updates for the Mavic Air, the Phantom 4 Pro Version 2, as well as the DJI Goggles Race Edition. Further to this, I'm going to talk about a new product for the Inspire 2 that DJI hopefully will be releasing in the very near future for guys who want to use more than two remote controllers. Now, before I get started, if you like what you see in this video, please do subscribe to the channel. There is a button in the bottom right hand corner, somewhere down by here, and by pressing that, you'll get any updates on videos we release in the future. Further to this, if you'd like to support the channel, there are some links to the products you'll see in this video in the description. By purchasing via these helps us keep buying products to be able to talk to you guys. Okay, so let's get started. The first update they've released is for the DJI Mavic Air and it's version 1.00.0500. This solves some issues that people were having on the Mavic Air number one with active track. They say that when it loses lock now, it won't head off in a different direction on its own. So on the older firmware, if it lost lock, it would sort of lock onto something else and try and follow that. DJI have said they have improved the algorithm, which means it shouldn't do that anymore. They fixed an issue in Return to Home that meant it didn't work properly with the object avoidance sensors on the front and back. And they've also solved a problem where the aircraft would refuse to land. Even though you were holding the sticks down, for some reason it wasn't always picking that up and it would just hover in place. They've also tweaked a few other things like setting the time right on the photos, as well as fixing a problem that it wasn't detecting that the device was connected and it was still limiting you to that 50 meters distance, and sorry, 50 meters height and 80 meters distance whilst using it without a smart device. Device, even though you had one connected. Overall, this is a quite small update, but it does solve a number of issues. It is worth noting if you do this update that you will need to check all of your settings because it does have an update for the main flight controller and it means everything else has been set to default. So if you do this update, make sure you check all your settings before you fly. Something I just wanted to mention is some people had on the previous firmware that the aircraft would randomly yaw. Now, I have seen one report of this still happening. I can't actually say if it's a common issue or not. I've literally seen a single report of it. However, if you do get it, please do let me know. If you were getting it before this firmware, I can't say 100% if it will or won't resolve it. But again, as I've said, let us know and at least we can share that with everyone else. The next update was for Phantom 4 Pro version 2.0 users. Now specifically, this is the version 2.0 and not the standard one. And this actually brings some nice new features. First of all, DJI have updated the wireless system to OcuSync 2.0. If you've seen my other video on OcuSync and Lightbridge, you'll know that I said OcuSync was a form of SDR. And that means DJI can upgrade it. And just like I said, in this scenario, they have done. And what they've been able to do is bring the OcuSync on the um, Phantom 4 Pro Vision 2.0 up to the same level as it is on the Mavic 2. It was sort of an OcuSync version 1.5. It was dual band and it had some of the features of OcuSync 2.0, but DJI have officially said now that they have installed the OcuSync 2.0 protocol. So you've got all of the benefits that come with the Mavic 2 on that, which was a little bit more range, especially in uh, 1080p, as well as giving you absolutely crystal clear HD video. A couple of other things they've done is added support for Ground Station Pro. So users who use this for mapping, who've been using their PC to control it via the DJI Ground Station Pro app, you can now do it with the Phantom 4 Pro version 2 as well, as long as you've got that double A ended USB cable. They've also added support for the goggles to have multiple versions and that's coming to the Mavic 2 as well. Just like the original Mavic Pro, you had the ability to have multiple controllers and goggles and OcuSync 2.0 is having that same feature as well it's just coming one step at a time and that started with the Phantom 4 Pro as well. Finally they've also resolved an issue where it was doing strange stuff with the expo settings when you were moving the sticks and it says in the service notes that they've repaired that as well. So if you want more information on that I'll pop a link to the service notes in the description of this video. The next update is for the DJI Goggles Race Edition. Now this has actually had two updates in the last few weeks. The first was to give support for the Mavic 2 Pro and the Mavic 2 Zoom and the second update was adding tutorial for wireless connection. The basics were people didn't find it very easy to connect the goggles to the Mavic 2 and what DJI have done is put a tutorial straight on the goggles and it shows you how to bind it. Now the goggles race edition are now fully compatible wirelessly with the Mavic 2 Pro and the Mavic 2 Zoom. There are a few things to be aware of. You don't have all of the same controls that you had on the Mavic 1 with the DJI goggles to control the camera and all of the flight modes. Hopefully DJI will bring that in the near future but as it stands today you haven't got 
all of that functionality you've just got some limited secondly some users have said whilst using the goggles re especially with the mavic 2 that they're getting reduced range when they use it with their just their remote controller as normal it's fine however when they use it with the goggles they're noticing the range is reduced um one of the reasons appears for this is that it's default into the 5 gigahertz mode so if you are using it try forcing it to 2.4 but even then, the guys have said they have noticed a slight drop in range. Hopefully, this is something that DJI will optimise in future firmware. That's it for the firmware updates. The next thing I'm going to talk about is something called Multilink. Now, this is specifically for the Inspire 2, and it allows you to connect up to three additional remote controllers. Now, the guys who originally got the Inspire 2 will know DJI did mention that you will have the ability to have up to four RCs, and we've been waiting for that to come. It turns out you need an additional piece of hardware, and it's called the Multilink. It's a little device that plugs on the back of the existing remote controller, and it goes into the CAN bus port, and it allows you to connect up to three additional slave remotes to your Inspire 2's remote controller. Now it does this a little bit differently to the standard method of master and slave. Originally DJI had a network setup which used the internal patch antennas that are hiding in the top of this remote controller and that allows you to use up to one additional slave RC. However people did notice that a the range wasn't particularly great and b it only really worked well if you were able to point the top of this remote at the top of the slave remote as well and the reason for this was that they were using heavily directional patch antennas now multi-link is something that hopefully gets around this it allows you as i said to have up to three additional slave remote controllers and it uses a mesh network via the standard radio system you can have your main slave one which has both camera and gimbal control just like you can in normal usage and you can choose to either have gimbal control on the master remote or the slave and you can swap between the two however multi-link also allows you to have two additional slaves slave two and three have the ability to have full live feed as well as having control over the camera settings however they don't have the ability to control the gimbal so gimbal control is restricted to master and slave one whereas camera settings is available on slave one two and three as well as the master as well DJI state this system will work up to 150 meters in 2.4 gigahertz mode and 100 meters in 5.8. Hopefully this will work a lot better than the original built-in system because I do know it's been a bit of a frustration for some users. Finally, it's worth noting that it still works with all the standard accessories. So this system works on both the standard remote as well as the Syndense and you can still use things like the Syndense patch antenna, GPS, puck as well as the focus control as well so you don't have to worry about using those additional accessories there's an additional cam port on the side of the box and it allows you to plug it in as it stands today i have no idea on price dj i have uploaded the manual online and there's been some hints about this from the trade shows hopefully it will be released in the very near future and we'll get some pricing on it then i'm probably going to order one myself and put it through its paces and hopefully show you guys what it can do exactly and overall, that is it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. As I've said, please do subscribe. There are links in the description of this video and I will do another one again soon.